With great love and respect in my heart, I welcome you to this beautiful Sunday morning from Upasana. Before we begin, let's take a moment to arrive and settle down. So wherever you are, Just pull your spine straight, open your shoulders, lightening your mind, close your eyes. Relax your facial muscles, neck, Shoulders, spine, soften the belly and get grounded, grounded. Connect with a gentle rise and fall happening at the belly with each breath. Nothing more, just connect with the gentle rise and fall happening with each breath. Calm your eyes a bit more. Relax your shoulders a bit more. You are aware of the calmness settling down throughout your whole body. You are at ease. appreciating the gentle rise and fall happening with each breath at the belly. Effortlessly, breath is coming in and going out. Very mindfully, we are going to direct our attention from belly to the heart as we breathe in. Same movement, now it's vertical. In breath, navel to the heart. Out breath, attention coming back to the navel. And the in-breath, the heart lotus opening and the out-breath closing. Just imagine or visualize petals of the lotus unfolding as the breath comes up and closing as the breath goes out.
You're going to pause the breath wherever it is, just pause it and totally focus on the open heart lotus. Holding that image in your mind, a beautiful lotus, fully open at the heart. Gently release the breath, but keep the attention on the heart lotus. Let the imagination fill in that space more. The golden light above the lotus. Pause the breath again. and release. We pause the breath again and think about the stillness of your eyes. Stillness of the body, stillness of the breath, Stillness of the eyes, stillness of the mind. Release the breath. Keep your attention in the center of the forehead. Resume breathing. With the remembrance of the stillness of the eyes and the stillness of the mind. And slowly, we open our eyes and thank you for taking this time. It's good to see you after such a long time. I'm just going to see another page. Good. I just wanted to see who is here. We have just come out of Navratri. And spring has settled in. Trees are loaded with flowers. Grass is growing. 
temperature is perfect, at least in here today. Could change any moment. Navratri time, we spent so much time with our friend. Mantra, Mitra. Our mantra is our friend. Holding the hand of this friend, no matter where we are, no matter what situation we are in, no matter what's going on in our mind, holding the hand of this friend, we always come back home. This word mitra, friend, has a very deep meaning, very deep meaning. Casually, we throw the word around, oh, he's a friend of mine. But really, if you reflect on the word friend, what does it really mean to you? Yes, there is mother, there is father, there is a spouse, there are children, there are all kinds of people are in our life. Somebody becomes our mother and father because we are born. They have given birth to us and nurtured us. We didn't choose them, at least consciously. Maybe on a soul level, we chose them. But the, the choice that we make to make a friend or be a friend to somebody is a very conscious choice. And we don't make friends with somebody thinking. We feel something resonates on a much deeper level that we feel comfortable in their presence. We feel our heart is open in their presence. We can share things that we won't share with anybody else. So that friend and friendship is a very precious thing that we have in life. Spouses can be a tr really true friend to each other, but that goes beyond. That friendship is not because they're husband and wife. That friendship on a soul level. Baba used to say that you can have mother, father, husband, wife, children, son, daughter, but to be able to find a friend is the most precious thing in life. That's why our mantra, mantra, the mantra, mitra, our mantra is a mitra, a friend. When the guru gives you a mantra, guru reminds you that this mitra, this friend, this mantra will be with you till the last breath you take in this life. This is the only thing that is going to be with you in all the times, in all the situations, in all the places, with you. When we don't have such a friend, we find ourselves grasping. And whatever comes along, or whatever is there, You're laying in your bed, body can't move, you turn and the joints hurt and we cannot relate to that nowadays. 
And if you don't have anything to hold on to, you turn on the TV. I see and go in the hospitals to visit people. Everybody's TV is on. Even if they're not watching, it's making noise. It's as if we don't know how to be with ourselves. What if the TV, there is no TV? What if electricity goes out? When we are forced to be with ourselves, how are we going to? Our mind can cause havoc. It can go in, into fear. It can go into negativity. It can go into resentment, guilt trip thinking about all kinds of stuff, creating all kinds of negative emotions. But if we have a mantra, if we have a friend that can be with us, and we have developed our ability to be with this friend, time passes so beautifully. If nothing is happening, just closing our eyes and bringing our attention to this, what is already happening, just like the breath, when we were just sitting a few minutes ago. Our mind needs something to hold on to, to be with. So I suggested you to bring your mind to the little rise and fall, the breath, mind needed to be focused towards something. Breath is the best friend. It keeps us alive with each visitation. Just think about it. Either we can just learn or deep, deepen our ability to just be with a friend. We be with the breath. You don't have a guru. You don't have a mantra. Doesn't mean you can't do it. You can still do it. Develop the friendship with that breath. Prana. Prana. Prana is the life force. That life force is visiting us with each breath. How do you develop friendship with that? How do you develop friendship with anybody, even with a human being? Through appreciation. You appreciate good qualities in them. People have friendship with their dog, with their cat. That friendship begins with you appreciate some aspect of that relationship. We want to develop friendship with our pran, the breath. How much time do we spend once in a while just laying in the bed and appreciating the breath that's coming in? Appreciation is not a mental thing. Can you feel it on a deeper level? That it goes beyond words. When the words stop, something else happened in appreciation. I would like some time for you to explore that, the appreciation. When the mind stops, because mind is still counting, I like to appreciate because of this, because of this, because of this. When the when you go even beyond that, what happens in appreciation? When the mind stops, heart opens. When heart opens, there is no two. The union happens. So these are the stages we go through in devotion. These are the stages we go in. Uh, go through in meditation, whatever you call it, the whole journey is towards the union, towards the, so there are not two things. 
when the true union happens, the duality ends and something else takes place. So be it with your breath, be it with your mantra, or be it with the person who is in your life, or your friend, that somebody you really feel that on a much deeper level beyond what they are good for or what they could do for you or what, you, or what do they bring to your life, all that. When the keeping the score ends, something else happens. And we are very fortunate if we have that kind of friend in our life. Usually we call, oh, so-and-so is my friend, but if they didn't send me happy birthday, then I'm upset with them. That's not friend. If they didn't do something that you had expected them to do, so the friendship goes south. It's not like that. If there is a friendship, true friend, we are able to right through all kinds of storms. How do we know who is a friend? We can't know that through mind. It's a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. This is what I think in this day and age where our mind is so engaged and so active and so busy keeping score. Giving little attention to our heart is so important. Our mind is always active. We are always trying to find new things. And... That's why your practice is so beautiful. It's so simple. It's so simple. The mantra, mitra, the mantra that we have. One, two, three syllable long. And as we develop that ability to go deeper, Something else opens. I'm speaking about this because during Navaratri, each one of uh, people who were practicing had been suggested that do as many mala jap as your age or more or half, whatever, but do something. Spend a little quality time with your friend, with your mantra. When you have this mitra, this mantra mitra, laying in the bed, middle of the night, when all kinds of Klingons are coming and waking up, you can just turn your mind towards your mantra and just start repeating. See, you enter in a whole different state. This friend is always there to hold. You're looking that way. You can always hold your hand and say, come this way. Come towards you. Who is a friend? Your friend has always your well-being in his or her heart, no matter what. It's not conditional. That's the first definition of a friend who has always your well-being in his or her heart. It's not only when you are nice to them, then they, they're praying for you. And when you are not nice, then you go somewhere else. I don't care. Even in the disagreement, that friend never loses that. A friend will never wish any kind of harm to you, whether you have been good to them or not good to them.
a friend and friendship is a, a very precious thing in our life and it's worth cultivating and it's also worth protecting protecting i have seen people who have been good friends and over small things small 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 things something doesn't settle right and then there it goes the snap Rahiman Adhaga Premaka Matatoro Chatakai. Rahim was a poet. I like love his poetry. It says there's this thread of friendship, a thread of love. Don't just snap it. Because even if you tie it together, there'll be a little knot in there. The smoothness will be gone. So we need to protect our friendship also not keep questioning every move, not keep questioning every action. Instead of doubting, can we bring trusting? Instead of always demanding that this should be this and that should be that, just let it be. Doubt, question, Judgment, all those things come in when our mind is active. When our heart is active, all those things don't even exist there. So our friendship with our mantra, mantra is so simple, it's so innocent, it's just there. If you turn towards it, it's there for you. If you don't, it's not. It's it's still there around you, but you may have some expectation from your mantra. People do. And it does come. Simple things. Sometimes You want to bring some healing in your body. You want to bring some healing to somebody else's body. You don't know what else to do. Just holding a little water. Just a little water. Particularly in a copper cup, if you can have it. Just put it next to you and after doing your job, after repeating your mantra, sending that intention, that energy in that water, you just drink that water. Or you offer it to somebody who needs a little healing. They receive the healing through that, that water that is charged with your pure intention. So we can use our mantra, our practice to have little intervention in our life. But that again depends on your trust. If you don't trust it, you say, oh, maybe it will do, maybe it will not do, but because Babaji told me, so I'm doing it. See, the, the mind has already taken away the impact what this trust could bring. Our mantra, our mitra has tremendous power, provided I have my connection with it from a pure place in my heart. Mind will come in, doubting. Does it do any good? If, it, if you didn't doubt it, the whole power, the whole strength of that mitra will be with it. By doubting, we take it away. So during Navaratri, these are the kind of things we are so much focused on our mantra. And look at it, how, what kind of, 
the relationship you had with your mantra. Baba used to say today's reading was even a moment spent in the company of a good person can bring about greater change in us than reading many scriptures and doing all kinds of holy rituals. Even a moment spent in the company of the good. Your mantra is that, right there, right in your home, with you. Sitting with it with total trust. It's a gift from the sages. You have been given a mantra from a lineage that's ancient. With that mantra is the thread you're connected. And if you don't have a mantra, just think about the sacredness of your breath. This breath has been given to you. By God, you're connected with God, with this breath. Bringing a little appreciation. Let the doubting mind take a back seat. Open your heart. It can enrich our life so much. If we have friends and friendship, look at that too. Because friends are precious. Somebody who is so close to you, who you have been so close to, you have spent so much time. If some little sourness has come in and little, there is a wall, somebody needs to knock that wall down. Life is too short for those things. Making effort to mend those things only makes us greater. Greater in a sense that you are not only being directed by your ego and your mind. If you are a friend to someone and you have been distanced, it's it worth re-examining, maybe over small things. And if you try to reach out, see, first thing will come in, the mind will come in. The ankar, the ego will come in. That, oh, what if it doesn't happen that way? They will do the same thing again. So what? What is your dharma? You do your dharma. But don't stop acting just because you already think that what the reaction will be from the other side. Please do understand that even to mend a fence, if you make right effort, whether you succeed or not, that's not the point. <clears throat> you have made the effort. That's what is important. You have honored the good in you. The whole Navratri was about this, actually. The whole Navratri was about, uh, as the story is mentioned in the scripture, slaying the demon, Mahisasur. Mahisasur is none other than our own ego, just coming up in different forms. And Devi, the goddess, takes different forms to slay him. She slays him, but he appears up in another form. So actually, it's the story of her ego. The goddess, the goodness in us, comes out to take care of this asur, this demon. <clears throat> finishes it, but it sprouts again in another form. Our ego is, is very smart. Very smart. So, may we not always give 
may we not only lead our mind through the mind, uh, our life through the mind and the ego, let our heart open and examining our friend and friendship is very helpful. Thank you all for listening to me. I had no idea what I'm going to be talking to you. I came here, sat down, and that's what came. So you must have inspired it somehow. I would love to hear what's on your mind and greet you. There is a question, Babaji, and that is, how do I receive a mantra? By reaching out to someone you know who gives mantra. <laughs> and nowadays there is an email you can just send an email to them and maybe they will respond <clears throat> Receiving a mantra is a sacred act, and it's not just a matter of, um, okay, I want a mantra. And there are nowadays, you go in many workshops and seminars, and they're sending out mantras. But um, mantra, receiving a mantra is called diksha. Diksha is transference of something. So it's important to be... <clears throat> in the presence of the guru who you receive the mantra from. Person-to-person -person meeting is um, important. I have been noticing many people have been, you know, somebody is in Australia, somebody is in Germany, and they can't come. And I'm still struggling in your, on my own mind because traditionally, we come from a lineage, and the lineage has its own, that transference happens in person-to-person -person meeting. It can't be done. It hasn't been done over the internet, let's put it that way. So I'm still sitting with it. If it can happen like this, and you can't turn to the scriptures for that. So... We'll see what guidance comes. There's one other question, Babaji, in the chat, and that is, how do you tell the difference between the ego stopping you from doing something for its own gain versus your higher self stopping you or protecting you? You see, your higher self is the ego that feels threatened and that needs, that protects. Higher self knows you are protected. It's the ego that feels threatened and it's the ego that feels like I'm protecting. So yeah, under the garb of protecting, it surfaces again. But the higher self Ourself is what is in me is in you. Ourself knows that you are protected. It's the ego that feels threatened, that feels humiliated, that feels um, not respected. Ourself. Once you have gotten a glimpse of that, on a much deeper level, it knows, it knows nothing can harm it. So this conversation can have many levels. You know, someday I will come and talk to you and tell you, well, yes, God is everywhere, but keep your eyes open. 
Don't get thrashed like that guy by the elephant. So there are many layers to it. But deep, deep, deep inside you, we must know that nothing can touch us. Now, what is us? What is me? My body, my mind, my spirit. So which one are you identifying with at any given level, at any given action? So we also function from many different levels. And when we are at the heart level, we are not thinking about these things. We just do the right action. I'm not saying I always come from the heart place. Yes, being a human, we need to protect ourselves. But even let's not limit our life only to that. There must be some actions that come from that higher place. And I think in friend and friendship, there is no harm in reaching out and the mind will come and say, oh, the person then will think that you're lowering and you need them, that's why you're reaching out or whatever. There, are, but there could be many kind of things. But what you think and from where you are acting, that's what is important, not what you are projecting it uh, on the other person. If you have made the right effort, you're, you have cleansed yourself. I know it's not that easy to do. We are all humans and we have conditioning, but once in a while, when that kind of thought comes, visits us, we must honor it. We must listen to it, think about it, and then see what happens. <clears throat> It's good to see you, Alex. I have been missing you at Upasana. <laughs> Shanti and Rani both are waiting for you. Say hi. <laughs> okay, everyone, it's a beautiful day. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. And uh, thank you all. And this year, this year there will be only four three ratris. We are not going to do it every month like last year. This year will be just selected weekends. So I would like if any of you have ever thought about it, think about it, doing a three ratri. I'm still in Navratri mode, so that's why I'm mentioning it. Look for those days, uh, dates, and if you're thinking about coming, visiting, or this. Um, that'll be good. Three Ratris. There'll be only four. Only four Three Ratris this year. So, and we are also looking into how people could do Three Ratri from their own home. Uh, so we're looking into how to bridge the gap so people could do from their home and people who are at Upasana, they could do it here, but somehow energetically we are connected. So we are looking into that, thinking about that, and if you have any thoughts and inspirations, shoot an email and be a part of the dialogue. Thank you all. May the Divine Mother, may the grace of the Guru keep you in good health and live happily with your loved ones. Thank you all. <clears throat>